Loop functions are some of the most powerful functions in the R language, uh, and they make it uh, kind of very easy to use, especially in an interactive setting. Uh, the idea behind a loop function is you want to execute a loop over an object or a set of objects um, in a way that's kind of uh, uh, that does a lot of work in, in a very small amount of space. That way. You don't have to type as much on the command line. Of course, we already learned about loops. We know about for loops and while loops, things like that. And those are all work very well. However, they are kind of less compact in a certain way. So there are a couple of loop functions in R, uh, and they usually have the word apply in them somewhere. Um, so the, some of the key ones are l apply, s apply, apply, t apply, and m apply. Um, and the real workhorse function that, I, that I'd like to talk about here is l apply. And the idea behind l apply is that you have a list of objects and you want to loop over the list of objects and apply a function to every element of that list. Um, and so it's a very general concept, uh, and it can be used very powerfully to do a lot of computation in a few, in just a little bit of typing. Um, S apply is a variant of L apply uh, that simplifies the result. Apply is a function that uh, operates over the margins of an array, so this is very useful uh, if you want to take summaries of uh, matrices or other th or higher dimensional arrays. T apply um, is short for table apply, um, and it applies a function over subsets of a vector. Uh, and M apply is a multivariate version of, real, of L apply. So I'll go into details about how these work uh, in, a, in, a bit, in a minute. Um, there's also another function called split, uh, which doesn't actually apply anything to objects, uh, but it's often uh, useful in conjunction with functions like L apply or S apply, because it splits objects into sub pieces. So L apply. L apply takes three arguments. Basically, uh, the first argument is a list, uh, which is called x. The second argument is a function, uh, or the name of a function. Uh, and then there are other arguments uh, that are, can be passed through the dot, dot, dot argument. And the dot, dot, dot argument is used to pass arguments that go with the function that you're being, that you, that's being applied to each of the elements of the list. Um, if x is not a list, uh, then it will be coerced to a list, if possible. If it's not possible to coerce the object to a list, uh, then you'll get an error. Uh, so the lapply function you can see is very simple. The code for it is right here. Um, basically, the fun uh, we look for the function. Uh, if, it's, if the object is not a list, then it's coerced to a list using as.list. And then the, the rest of the lapply function is, is implemented internally in C code to make it a little bit faster. Uh, so the idea with lapply is that you're going to take this list of things. And remember, a list can contain any any number of different types of objects. So they could be vectors or matrices or data frames or whatever it may be. Um, and you want to apply a function to each one of these elements of the list. And that function is going to return something. Uh, it may not be the same thing that uh, it originally was in the list. So for example, it may take as an input as a vector, but then it may return a scalar as a result. So the function is going to return something uh, for every single object in that list, and the return values are going to be assembled in a new list, and that's what lapply is going to return. So lapply, it's key to remember, it always returns a list. Uh, what goes in uh, may or may not be a list, but it will be coerced to a list, and what comes out will always be a list. Um, so here's a simple example. I'm creating a list with two elements. The first one's called A, and it's a sequence from 1 to 5. The second one is called B, and it's, a, it's, it's 10 normal random variables. So when I, and now what I want to do is I want to loop over this list of two elements and apply the mean function to each of those elements. So you can see that when I call lapply on x and I apply the mean function, uh, I get another list back. Uh, and notice that the list has the same names as the original list, a and b. Uh, but now I've got the mean of the first element and the mean of the second element. And so that's how lapply works. Uh, here I've got a slightly uh, more complicated list. I've got four elements. Um, and I've got, I'm calling lapply to each of those elements, uh, and I'm getting the mean of each of those elements. So now I've got a list with four elements. The names are preserved. Uh, and notice, that, of course, you know, each of the elements of the original list was a vector of, some, of a numeric vector of some sort. But what I'm getting back is a vector with just a single number in it for each element of the list. So here's another way, uh, I, way to call uh, lapply. Uh, here I'm creating a sequence one of x one to four, and I'm calling runif, so, which, is cre which generates a uniform random variables um, um, to uh, f using a uh, random number generator. Now the first argument to runif is the number of uniform random variables that you want to generate. So if I say runif one, it's going to generate a single random variable. If I say runif two, it's going to generate a vector of two random variables. So here I'm, I'm applying L, uh, the runif function to the sequence one, two, three, four, 
So what I'm going to get is a list of the first element is a single random number of random uniform. The second element is going to be a vector of two random uniforms. The third element is going to be a vector of three. And the fourth element is going to be a vector of four random uh, uniforms. And so uh, you'll know, uh, if you know the runif function, you'll know that it has other arguments to it beyond the, the number of uh, uniforms to generate. But those other arguments have default values, so I don't need to specify them. Now suppose I wanted to call the runf function on each one of these elements of x, um, but I didn't want to just generate a uniform between 0 and 1, which is the default. Suppose I wanted to generate a uniform between 0 and 10. Uh, so now I need to pass some arguments to the runf function, which are not the default values. Uh, in particular, I need to change the max value. Uh, so I can do that through, with lplie by passing these arguments through the dot 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 uh, argument. Uh, so here I'm calling lplie on x, I'm, calling the, I'm passing it the runf function, but then I'm specifying that I want the min to be 0 and the max to be 10. So now when I, the, the list that I get out of this uh, has random uniforms that are between 0 and 10. So lapply and the uh, associated functions make heavy use of what are, call, of what are called anonymous functions. Uh, anonymous functions are functions that don't have names. So you don't assign them a name of some sort, um, but you can kind of generate them on the fly. So here's a, uh, just a quick example. I'm going to create a list that contains two matrices in it. Uh, the first is a 2x2 ma two two matrix, and the second is a 3x2 uh, two two matrix. Uh, so you can see the list here. There's two elements. They're named A and B. And suppose I want to extract the first column from each one of these matrices. So what I can do is I can call lapply. So there's no function that out there that already um, extracts the first column of a matrix. Um, but uh, this is easy to do. You can just write a function that just takes the first element, the first column of that matrix. So here I'm going to call lapply on x, and I'm, I'm going to write. I'm going to write the function right here. So I'm going to say function, and then I'm giving. I'm going to give it an argument, and then given that argument, I extract the first column. So here, when I call lapply with this function, I get the first column from A and the first column from B. So this function doesn't exist except within the context of lapply, and after the lapply function is finished, uh, the, some, the function basically goes away. So that's an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. And lapply and a lot of these other types of functions use anonymous functions very heavily because unless there already exists a function that does the operation that you want to do, you're going to have to write the function uh, kind of on the spot. So S apply is just a variant of L apply. Um, and all it does is it tries to simplify the result of L apply if possible. So recall that L apply always returns a list. Uh, but sometimes you don't want a list. Sometimes you want something different. So for example, if the, if the result is a list where every element is a length 1, then what L supply will do is that it will return a vector of all, of, all, of all those elements. So, so usually you don't want an, a list where every, all, every element is a single number, for example. And so S apply will simplify that into just a vector. Um, if, if the result is a list where every element is a vector of the same length, uh, for example, if, if, you, if the list comes back and every element has a length 5, for example, then what S apply will do is we'll, it will put those elements in a matrix that's, that's 5 by however long the, matri the, the list is. And so that, that's often what you want to happen. Uh, but if you, can't, if you can't figure out how to simplify the object when it comes back, for example, if the object has many different types of things that come back, uh, then it's just gonna, it won't do anything. It will just return a list. So here, in this, in this example, when I called lapply and I applied the mean to everything, what happens is I got a list back that's of length 4, and every element of the list is a single number. And so it would be, it'd be a lot nicer if I just got my list back uh, that was just a, I'm sorry, if I just got a vector back with all these numbers in it. And that's exactly what sapply does. So sapply called on x with the mean function gives me a vector with four numbers in it. Um, of course, if I called mean on the on the list by itself, that's not really going to work because mean is not meant to be applied to lists, and so you'll get a warning message with NA back. <laughs>